Hello grade 12 students! This video covers chapter 4 of your practical research 2 entitled Understanding Data and Ways to Systematically Collect Data. The following are the objectives. Choose appropriate quantitative research design. Describe sampling procedure. Construct an instrument and establish its validity and reliability. Plan data collection. Plan data analysis using statistics and hypothesis, hypothesis testing, and present written research methodology. At the end of this chapter, you should be able to craft already your chapter 3 entitled Methodology, which includes the following design, participants, instrument, data collection, and data analysis. Let us have first the Component 1 of your Chapter 3, the Research Design. Research design may be defined as the overall plan, strategy, and scheme for conducting a study. It is the blueprint for the collection, measurement, and analysis of data. Research designs for quantitative researches may be broken down to two, experimental and non-experimental. Under non-experimental designs, we have descriptive, correlational, and causal comparative. Under experimental designs, we have true experimental, quasi-experimental, and single subject design. Quantitative research designs may be also grouped according to the following. Descriptive with subtypes, normative survey, correlational, evaluative, and comparative. Experimental design with subtypes pre-experimental, true experimental, and quasi-experimental design. And historical. A descriptive Research design is employed to describe the status of an identified variable such as events, people, or subjects as they exist. This design is um, usually makes some type of comparison, contrasts, and correlations, or sometimes called cause-effect relationships to some extent. Take note that survey designs are procedures in quantitative research in which you admin, an, administer a survey questionnaire to a small group of people called a sample to identify trends in their attitudes, behaviors, or characteristics of a larger group called population. We have several descriptive designs. One is descriptive normative survey. This design attempts to establish norms or standards based on a wide class of survey data such as demographic data or average perceptions of a set of respondents. Another is correlational. This design estimates the extent to which different variables are related to one another in a population of interest. Take note that the term correlation implies prediction but not causation. And the strength of relationships between variables is determined by correlation coefficient or p-value. The descriptive comparative is another research design which aims to establish significant difference between two or more groups of subjects or individuals on the basis of a criterion measure. For example, school performance or IQ level of female and male students or students from different socioeconomic status. The descriptive evaluative design aims to judge goodness of a criterion measure. For example, the IQ changes among students. A certain test may be given simultaneously to students of different age ranges to see pattern or changes in the criterion measure. The assessment evaluative design is 
used to determine the effectiveness or efficiency of a certain practice or policy when applied to a certain group of respond respondents or responses. For example, a local government orders its residents to register and secure an identification card to present it when entering a certain establishment in the city to find out if the practice can effectively trace people who had close contact with a person that is tested for positive for a virus then this design can be used for more effective method of testing cause and effect relationships among uh, there are considerations first so let's have the considerations for use of descriptive research designs. One is the lack of uh, control over variables, which makes studies less reliable in terms of actual hypothesis testing. And two, unless the design is normative survey where the entire population is uh, to be considered, conclusions drawn are only at best tentative. So again, for more effective method of testing cause and effect relationships among variables, experimental research designs are usually employed. These designs make use of the scientific method to establish cause and effect relationships between or among a group of variables that make up a study. Studies that employ these designs are also called repeated measures studies, which involve control and the treatment introduced as the researcher is in, in order uh, in order to isolate its effects by means of that control. In diagramming experimental designs, the following symbols are uh, used. We have X. We have X to symbolize an experimental treatment. O for observation or measurement. Subscripts are used if there are several measurements to be done. Random assignment of test is denoted by the symbol are. The pre-experimental designs are weak as compared with other types of uh, experimental designs. These are more often used in exploratory researches. Three examples are one shot, one group, post-test, pre-test, post-test, and static group designs. The one shot uh, design involves a treatment denoted by X and one measurement denoted by O sub 1, meaning only one measurement is going to be collected. The one group pre-test post-test design involves a treatment as well as a pre-test and a post-test. But again, there is uh, one group of uh, subjects only uh, is involved in this type of research. And the third, static. The static group design involves a treatment and two measurements, a post-test from the two groups, an experimental group, and a control group. The true experimental designs can establish cause and effect relationships. Using statistical analysis, these designs can support or refute a hypothesis. There are three criteria that must be met. One, there must be two groups. One control and one control and one experimental group. So a total of two groups. Number two, there must be a variable that is manip manipulated by a researcher. And number three, there should be random assignment. There are three uh, examples of under the true experimental designs. We have the pre-test, post-test control group design, post-test only control group design, and Solomon for group design. To have the diagrams, we have a scene on the diagram for the pre-test, post-test control group design. There are random assignments of experimental and control groups as you can see here uh, denoted by capital R okay random as n a total of four measurements denoted by O sub 1 O sub 2 O sub 3 and O sub 4 there only the experimental design is given a treatment an experimental 
group, the experimental group is given the treatment. The control group is not given the treatment. For example, you design an advertising material to measure awareness of a group of individuals of a certain vaccine brand. You give the material to the experimental group but not to the control group. But giving, but prior to giving the um, material, both groups were given a pretest. And then the experimental group is given the treatment and after the treatment, both groups are given again a post-test. This is how, and then using appropriate statistical tools, you will determine significant difference in their uh, brand awareness. This is how you'd use the design or employ the design in a certain research. The post-test only design diagram here shows uh, two groups also. But this is different from the pretest post-test control group as to as there is no pretest uh, uh, to be given to both groups, only a post-test. So after giving ex the experimental group a treatment, both are uh, subjected to uh, taking the post-test. And then using, again, statistical analysis, you will see difference between significant difference between the, let's say, awareness of a brand. If, if we are to consider the same example as in the first uh, example of or type of um, the design, experimental design. And then we have the Solomon IV group. The Solomon IV group design is more complex as seen on this diagram. If you will look closely, the pretest post-test control group design and post-test only control group design are combined on this design. There are four uh, groups all in all they, that are randomly selected. So we have experiment, experimental group 1, ex, uh, control group 1, experimental, experimental group 2, and control group 2, which are all randomly selected. The two experimental groups are given the treatment. But only the first two groups are given the pretest. But all the four are given the post-test. And then um, you will, uh, uh, appropriate statistical analysis will determine significant difference to uh, either support or refute hypothesis that you will set before the data collection. Third is the quasi-experimental design. This, uh, the studies fall under this uh, uh, or studies that employ this design are considered more realistic than through experimental studies. Unlike in the experimental design, the researcher lacks randomization and the control over treatments in quasi-experimental uh, design, but is also able to generate results to form general trends. Historical design uh, our, our designs are employed to collect, verify, or synthesize evidences from the past in order to establish facts that may defend or refute hypotheses. These designs are secondary. Uh, these designs are secondary as these designs use secondary as well as primary documentary evidences such as logs, diaries, official records, archives, or non-textual uh, information such as maps pictures, audio, or visual recordings. This design um, involves three processes. Number one, data collection. Number two, data analysis. And three, report of findings. Some examples of researchers that employ these designs are a pattern of population or mortality increase or changes in lifestyles and many others. Let's now have the second um, subheading of your chapter 3 under methodology uh, for methodology sampling sampling is done to select participants who will take part in your study they are whom you are collecting numerical data from for your data analysis later on sampling refers to the process of selecting a number of individuals for a study such as a way uh, that the individuals represent the larger group from which they were they will be selected Sample is a smaller group of individuals from a population, while a population is, is the larger group of 
uh, individuals from which you uh, took your or you will take your sample. So we have sample as a smaller group from a larger group which is the population. We call the entire population to which the researcher is interested in generalizing conclusions as target population while a subject of uh, the target population accessible population. We have different types of samplings grouped as probability, probability and non-probability samplings. Probability sampling uses randomization and gives all individuals in a population equal chance to be selected. These techniques include random, stratified, systematic, cluster, and multi-state. To give a sm uh, small uh, sh short description of each um, technique, in random sampling, all individuals in a population are given equal chance of getting selected. In stratified sampling, individuals are grouped as, uh, and the sample is randomly selected from each group. So from each group, uh, there will be participants to be selected. So that's how you do stratified sampling. Individuals are, num bar are numbered in systematic samplings. And then you pick every nth, for example, every fifth uh, uh, individual from the group to be selected as part of your sample. Individuals are grouped as clusters in cluster random sampling. And the group to be selected will be considered as the sample. While in multi-state state random sampling, you combine two or more sampling techniques under this group of uh, sampling. The non-probability sampling involves no randomization. Convenience, accidental, or availability sampling considers availability of individuals. In purposive sampling, members of a certain group of individuals are purposively sought after. In modal instance sampling, most common individuals within a certain group that is already defined are sought after, while in expert sampling, the most qualified are selected. The, in, the proportional and non-proportional sampling considers needed categories and select individuals to meet the required number of proportions. While in snowball sampling, um, where the if you are if you if the population target population is uh, small, individuals will be asked to uh, help identify other individuals from which you can collect data to become your sample size. Let's go to instrumentation, which refers to the process of developing, testing, validating, and using an instrument. A research instrument is the device used by a researcher in order to collect or gather needed data for his collection, data collection. In uh, research instruments are may be categorized into research completed and subject completed. Under research completed instruments, we have rating scales, interview guides, tally sheets, flow charts, performance checklists, logs, and observation forms. While under subject completed instruments, we have questionnaires, self checklists, attitude scales, personality inventories, achievement or aptitude tests, projective devices, or and sociometric devices. Instrumentation involves testing for validity and reliability. Validity of instruments refers to the extent to which the instrument measures what it intend, intends to measure and performs as it is designed to perform. The three types of validity are content validity, which measures the extent to which an instrument accurately measures all aspects of a construct. Two, construct validity, that measures the extent to which an instrument measures the intended construct and criterion validity that measures the extent to which an instrument is related to the uh, to other instruments that measure the same variable. While reliability re refers to the extent to which an instrument is consistent, a reliable instrument should have the following attributes. One, internal consistency or homogeneity. This is the extent to which an, all the items measure one construct. Two, stability, test, retest, retest uh, correlation. This uh, refers to the consistency of report, uh, results using an instrument with repeated testing. And equivalence, the consistency among responses of multiple users or al alternate forms of an instrument. 
Data collection involves use of numbers to assess and evaluate data wherein the data collected must answer the research questions you set and allow you to prove or dispute disprove hypothesis. Some primary sources of data are experimentation, observation and survey, uh, reports, books, journals, documents and magazines are on the other hand secondary sources of data. There are different methods to collect data. Number one is observation. It is a way of gathering data by watching behavior, events, or noting physical characteristics in which, uh, in, in their natural setting. It is structured and may include use of recording sheets or checklists. In doing observation, define you have to define what is to be observed, then think about how the observation will be made, recorded, and coded. Next is the interview. Interview is also structured where questions may be answered by a yes or a no and may also include a checklist. An interview may be structured face-to-face -face or via telephone or online, internet, with internet um, um, access, through the internet access. Questionnaires or survey forms should have should, should provide data required for the facilitation of data analysis. analysis. A questionnaire may be paper, pencil, web page, web-based, or self-administered and typically has the following sections. Identification data, an introduction, instruction, information, and classification data. You may look for samples in books or uh, the internet. Another is... Uh, rating. Rating scales can be used for observations to allow a researcher to rate a behavior or an event. A scale lists an ordered series of categories of a variable and assigns numerical values on each item such as this in the examples. The last are the tests. Tests provide a way to assess subjects' knowledge and capacity to apply new knowledge to new situations. The two types of tests are norm-referenced and criterion-referenced. The last component of your methodology is the data analysis. This is the systematic approach to investigations during uh, which numerical data are collected and the researcher transforms them into numerical data. Anal analysis of data in quant quantitative research is believed to be easier and more accurate because uh, we make use of statistics here. Analysis provides quantifiable and easy to understand results. And there is a rule of thumb here according to the type of research. Descriptive studies only use descriptive statistics. Experimental studies, including quasi, use inferential statistics. Therefore, you need to know how to distinguish between descriptive researches and experimental researches as well as uh, the difference between descriptive uh, statistics and experimental statistics, which we will be discussing further in the next video. Meanwhile, you can start crafting your methodology. Thank you for watching. Until next time.